there's dairy milk, and there's milk and bar, or water milk, or mint or organic. <laughs> I, I got it. Some people never tasted chocolate. Some people don't have access to chocolate. Some people don't have access to food. You know, so there's a lot to, to think. We, we can think, just, just develop a kind of gratitude that we've got access to it. Yeah, that again brings mindfulness, makes the mind positive. Then, take a smell. Yeah. And just at the same time, be still in the present, still becoming aware of your breath. Still got it. And then when you're ready, you know what to do. Put it in there. <laughs> but don't, don't eat it as you normally would. Just put it in there, roll it around, have a taste. And as you're doing it, just remember all the things, where it's come from, the people involved. Just become aware of the tune. You don't even need to put the whole cube in, necessarily. Yeah, don't worry. So if we eat mindfully, it doesn't have to be, it's not an exaggerated thing, it's just being mindful. It actually helps us to become aware, it brings us into our body well, grounds us, focuses us. Um, try that. 
you know, it's something that we can practice. Mindfulness is an art. You know, it turns our actions, our actions become graceful, our actions become beautiful, and naturally, there's no wish to harm anything. You know, practicing mindfulness um, because it, you know, we're motivated by love, we're motivated by gratitude, so it naturally leads to non-harmfulness in our everyday life. Meditation, actual meditation, a formal meditation, and mindfulness that go hand in hand. If you practice mindfulness during the day, then when you come around to meditate, you're less distracted. One of the main things that gets in the way of people when they practice meditation is distractions. Okay? Because that, uh, we're thinking about everything we've done during the day. Whereas if we're mindful during the day, we have less distraction. And naturally, Mindfulness leads to concentration and focus. Easier to retain information, easier and memory improves. You know, there's scientific evidence now that meditation improves our memory, it improves our concentration. When our mind is more concentrated and more efficient, we can do things. In some respects, we can actually do things quicker, interestingly enough, because. Uh, we're more efficient, our minds are more efficient and less distracted. We do live, you know, one of the things that people say is uh, we live in a world of distractions, it's impossible to practice that. There's so many distractions around us. But it depends on how we relate to them. If we relate to distractions, uh, the distractions around us, but you know, if we, we're fed by them, we go after them unnaturally, of course that mind is distracted. But it's up to us how distracted we are. Meditation helps to focus and make our mind less distracted. No one really likes to have a distracted mind. You know, that, that feeling you get when you're going around the internet where you're distracted. There's no, there's no sense of satisfaction or peace there. Anyone still eating? <laughs> so, what do you think? How was it? How was the uh, how was it for you? How was the day of work? You stunned, aren't you? <laughs> 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 it was quite good, like noticing how my my mouth was reacting to it, and um, like that's something that I don't ever think about. So I was kind of thinking about what was happening internally. Yeah. It lasted longer than just stopping it, but I kind of expected that. But then what I didn't expect was the, like, after I finished one piece, it did feel like I'd eaten, you know, six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, for like yeah. that kind of satisfying yeah. nervousness of all the sugar, like, in, yeah. This might sound a bit kooky, but it's like I'm kind of listening to things that I'm sort of always saying, you know, I mean, it's like your body's always telling you these things. Uh, I'm going to experience just listening in at last. Yeah. Interesting. Anything else? Chocolate tea. Chocolate tea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought it was really different because like, there was a bit of a joke between us because I only eat white chocolate. I don't eat that. So like, that's all I really kind of know when I think of chocolate. And yeah. I think it tasted really different. Yeah. When I ate it really slowly, like it was so much sweeter, I was probably a bit unbearable after it. I don't know, I wasn't really glad with that. No, interesting. Oh. Did anyone else have a similar experience? Yeah, I usually don't eat dark chocolate, but I wanted to try it now, and it's actually pretty, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like, I didn't enjoy it before, but now it's kind of like, yeah. it's actually sweet. Yeah. Like some of it's really bitter, but you can get stuff that's in between. Ten yeah. of them. <laughs> but I didn't even like in between, but like now I, I did, I did not like. <laughs> Does anyone like think no different from what's it all about? Anyone sitting there thinking a bit perplexing? Did you? Finished you thinking, give me another piece. 
sweets to yourself or you're writing an essay or whatever, you do start realising that rather than focusing on your work, your mind's going, well, in 17 minutes I can have another piece of chocolate, like I'll, I'll reason that with myself and you realise, why am I worrying about this? Like, I'll just eat some chocolate in a minute. Yeah, your mind always gets distracted. I, I always find that if I do an essay, if I'm working or I'm um, having to read a lot, I have to be really well fed before mm. it. So that my mind doesn't wander. It's difficult to sit down to do like a whole yeah, session of reading with that cup of tea and stuff. I think it's one of the hardest things to conquer your desire for food. So therefore, when I work, I always make sure that like throughout the day I'm really well fed. Otherwise, I will sit there like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and I just that's not the bad thing, is it? No, you need to eat food. Well, yeah, it's a natural thing. <laughs> yeah. You're always it's distracted by that. That's not good. It's, like, it's, like yeah, it's just like an experiment, really, you know, as to whether, you know, who's in charge. That's what we should have built it as. Who's in charge, question mark. I mean, who's actually... Like someone said to, I said to someone the other day, you know, sometimes I skip breakfast. Oh, God. I couldn't imagine doing that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then I just scratch this thing and say, a lot of this is psychological. Because our body is saying things, but it's also, we can psychologically trick ourselves that we need stuff. You know, actually physically need this. Because we're almost like we're attached to a routine of eating, we're attached to a routine of doing something. But it's just investigating. I mean, I'm not saying one thing or the other. This session is just like an experiment, really, for you to try out these techniques, um, but don't try them at home. Yeah. This could lead to disastrous consequences. Yeah. Imagine trying this with a, you know, a nice warm meal. That's two mouthfuls, it would be stone cold. <laughs> 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 two hours later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's lots of different mindfulness practices. Um, mindful eating is one of them. Have you got something to say? Yeah, you I wanted, yeah, both. Um, I wonder perhaps if, you know how when you eat someone else's food, like your mother's cooking, or yeah. you go to a restaurant or something, yeah. whether the fact that it tastes better to you, you come out and get that awesome, most amazing meal or whatever. Yeah. Much better than my cooking or whatever. I think perhaps part of that is the fact that you've, you've actually stopped and you've done some sort of slight mindfulness of it. Well, in those situations, you kind of ritualise the meal, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. So You're more aware of I agree. It. I agree okay. completely. Yeah. Does, it been, does anyone read Aldous Huxley? Yeah. 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 So, one of his works, The Island, which is, is kind of like an idea of what a utopia would be like. Not a um, technological utopia, it's like a little flat or island where everyone gets along. But they have this thing that they call, like, they call grace before meals, but instead of like praying, the first grace of each meal is just they take really long on the first mouthful and then eat the rest of the meal. So it's kind of the same idea. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, in some degree, grace, you know, different religions have it, don't they? There's quite a lot to be said for it, that, that process. It doesn't have to, necessarily have to be a religious one, but just, and as, as, you know, the first step of the mindful eating was rest on the breath, it doesn't have to be for a prolonged period of time, just three or four seconds. It's like an appreciation. And and also if you eat with appreciation, like the gratitude thing, where's it come from? But like a genuine appreciation for it. I think which is what you're getting at, you know, you go for a meal or you go to your mum's mum's cooking. It's like an appreciation there. <coughs> if someone's really gone out of their way to cook for you. But with this job that we can't visualise it, we're completely detached from because that's the nature of the society we live in. Like we, yeah. like we, since we were children, have been bred to believe that that is just a inner plastic wrapper that we go and get yeah. and it's a treat. But now it's like, oh, I'll think about the person that made it. It's like, 
Well, apart from those kind of propaganda photos of that cabbies put up of like happy workers, so is that the only thing I can really, or like maybe a lorry driver who's driving it? I can't. I can't relate to it. Well, sorry if it's abstract, but you can relate to Emrys <coughs> who brought the chocolate oh, into the room. <laughs> <laughs> you can relate to the person in the supermarket, you know, the people stacking the shelves. There is some. Some of it's abstract, yeah, because you don't know the people who grew the, 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 the plants and so forth, you don't know the people who transport it. But there's a mixture, isn't there? Of, you can use your imagination as well. This kind of thing. You don't have to have met every single person. On the route, because if you did, that's that's a billion people. You know, well, it's probably the entire world. Every single person in the world is responsible for you eating that chocolate. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people involved in it. It's vast. It, in fact, it's so big. It's almost like we don't want to go there. So it just, as you say, you just oh, it's just in the wrapper, and it's nice and safe. And here I am eating the chocolate. But then it might make you start thinking. Oh, well, I want to have a guarantee that what I'm eating, like, might make you more ethically in a way. Yeah, well, that's it's true. Yeah. What I was thinking was sometimes when eating, especially things like chocolate, if I haven't gone out of my way for, to, to buy fair trade or something with a certification, then I'll actually work against that mindfulness because I won't want to think about where it's come from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like I'll, if it's McDonald's or something. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. For example, it's the same with like, it's the same with like if you're if you're buying something like the animal welfare. If you're not a vegetarian. You, even if you usually buy the free range stuff, if you buy something pre packaged, you, you don't want to think about where that's, some of that's come from. You just want to get through it. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean with certain, you know, yet more ethical versions of products, I find that, I, like, it, on balance, from, from my point of view, it's worth it buying them because I don't have to um, play off, like, the niceness and the cheapness of the food against the slight feelings of guilt for not buying a more ethical version. If I buy the more ethical version, then I just have a better experience of including, like, listicly, really. Weird. So, do you think so. mindfulness can uh, actually improve our society? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's going to be a bit weird. But, I mean, it, it, there's a lot to be said for it. I mean, it actually uh, can solve some of the uh, greatest issues in the world. So we're looking at it from uh, internally. Often, you know, when we look at solving problems, we're looking at solving them outside. But in this way, looking at what we're looking at solving problems from the inside, so we take responsibility and we change our mind.